Hi, everyone. Welcome to Create-a-thon. My name is Jackie Madden. I'm going to be showing you an introduction to neurographic art. You're going to need a few supplies. You need something to draw on. I'm just using mixed media paper here. <coughs> Any kind of paper you'd like, or this is just a, a standard sketch pad. You're also going to need something to write with. So you can use um, Sharpies, colored Sharpies, colored pencils, a nice free floating pen. Um, whatever you whatever you would like. And then you're going to need something to color with. So you can use uh, colored markers. <clears throat> watercolor, um, watercolor crayons or uh, pencils. So first I'm going to show you some things that uh, originated from Neurographica, which is a art therapy created. <clears throat> for helping to deal with problems and stress and things like that. Um, it was created by a psychologist and you can find information online if it's something that you would like to explore. So that has some rules and I'll show you some uh, basic rules, but neurographic art has expanded and it uses some of the techniques and integrates other art art techniques and you can pretty much do whatever you'd like with it. So again, I'm going to start with some of the basics, but you don't have to follow these rules with neurographic art. You can pretty much do whatever you want. <clears throat> so one of the things that is discussed is the important important things is a neurographic line. So basically, that means a line that doesn't follow a pattern. So if you're writing fast, it's typical that you would doodle or scribble a pattern like this where it repeats, basically is making the same pattern over and over again. A neurographic line is something that you would see in nature like the roots of a tree or neurons in the brain, um, lightning <clears throat> or a river. Uh, so if you follow this line, no, no, nothing repeats. There's no pattern to it. There's no repetition to it. It's just a, a random, there's a randomness to it like you'd find in nature. So to draw it, you would just take any point on the edge and just let your hand flow wherever it wants to flow. And it usually goes better if you are going slow. And you'll see that it doesn't repeat. You just let your body and your intuition let it go as it wishes. If you find that you're going too fast and you're getting this repeated line and you'd like to slow it down, you can use your non-dominant hand and that helps a little bit. Another thing you could try is using a small object to push around like a, a coin. <clears throat> so I don't have a coin right here, but here's some tape. Um, so you basically would just move it around like this and that helps you to slow down and, and go in a, in a more random pattern. <clears throat> Another thing that is to be considered is uh, with the original Neurographica, when there's an intersection like here, 
that's considered like a conflict. <clears throat> so you would round this off at each intersection. so that it isn't so sharp or so harsh, like this, and just fill it in. So there's a couple ways to do it. As you saw, I just made a, a curve there and then filled it in. You might want to follow the line and then curve towards the other line. That makes a nice smooth transition. If you find a spot where you have a, a thicker spot like here and it kind of sticks out, you can just go over it and smooth it out. So you see it had changed from a, a very sharp intersection to a nice smooth pattern here. And so even if you're just looking at it, at it from the design perspective, it just has a nice, uh, gives it an interesting look. <clears throat> so here I've made some of these neurographic lines and they'll intersect, intersect and you'll see that they go from one side to another side. So they don't just stop in the middle someplace. And then here, I've done some of the rounding like I talked about. So if you have us have some of them that haven't been haven't been rounded yet, here's an intersection I haven't rounded yet. Let me just a little bit thicker sharpie here. So these haven't been rounded. So I would just. Go around, make a little curve, and fill it in. And you can do those however you'd like. So you might want to make the curve very close to the intersection. Uh, like for instance, I'll show you. So you might want just a little bit of a curve so you're not seeing very much of a, a shape right there at that corner. Or you might want to make it a big corner, make it big and bold. You can do whatever you'd like. And the same goes with your lines. You might want to use a thin line, a thin Sharpie or colored pencil, or you might want to use a big thick marker. It all depends on what you'd like it to look like. Would you like it to be thin like this or thick like that? <clears throat> so then you might want to add some shapes. Here I have a circle and here there is a square. And you notice the square went off the edge and that's okay with, with neurographic art. It can go off the page because your mind will consider that it keeps on flowing and it can tell that that was a square. <clears throat> so like, for instance, if you had a, if you were drawing a bigger picture, you could just have a second page here and just keep going. So the line can just keep flowing. <clears throat> with your, um, with your um, shapes, you'll just want to, even them out. So if they're not quite as round as you'd like, for instance, with this one, just go over it again and make it the way that you would like it. So you're going to complete all of these intersections at any place there's an intersection with this rounding. So here I have completed the rounding in this picture. As far as uh, how many lines and intersections you do, it's really up to you. If you have a smaller page and not too many lines, it won't take you very long to do. 
if you're using a full sheet like this and you have a lot of intersections, it will take quite a while to do the rounding. So you see by doing the rounding, you can get some interesting little shapes there. Anytime you're, you, ha you have a, an object, you're also going to round wherever those intersect. So this square had come, come to a point here and I just rounded that off. And now it has rounded corners and the same with the, with the circle. Every time there's an intersection, I'm gonna round that off. So I'll show you some examples. So here's one that's been completed and colored and I'll come back to that after I've shown you how I got there. This is one that's been done in pen. So the lines aren't so bold. You can see I had a square there and I've completed the rounding on the intersections. I haven't completed the rest of the rounding here. Here I have lots of lines and I've done some of the rounding. And then you're gonna start to complete, uh, to start to color. Whenever you're done with your rounding, you can start to color. And again, you're gonna use whatever you like to color with. You can use marker or watercolor or whatever you'd like. So here I've completed all my rounding and I started to color. With Nora Graphica, they don't use individual, they don't color individual cells, different colors, like in a mosaic or something. They, um, color two or three or more cells in some sort of a pattern. And you're gonna do whatever feels intuitively right. Um, now with neurographic art, none of these rules really apply. If there's something that you wanna do, if you wanna color each color separately, you can do that. Here's one with the rounding that's completed. You get different patterns and shapes depending on what you do. That one hasn't been colored yet. So here is one that I started a color. These were circles that I had colored in. And then I had started coloring this brown and it sort of looked like a tree to me. And this like the sun or the moon. And so I left this white so you could clearly see a tree. So you can complete the whole thing in color or just parts of it. So this is one that again is completely colored. Now I chose to use the blocks of color. So several sections make with one color, but you can do each cell separately, as I said. And here's one where I first used watercolor and just made a background so with some sky with just streaks of red, orange, yellow. And then I had some clouds and then I made the shape of some hills. So after that was completely dry, I went through and went around the area with some uh, neurographic lines. So I 
went around each cloud and around the shape of the hill. And then I connected each section to each other. Wherever there was an intersection, I would do the rounding. And something I forgot to mention, with traditional neurographica, everything should be connected. So if you insert a, a, a circle or say this cloud or something, everything should be connected. Um, but again, that's just depending on what you're doing. You can do whatever you want with neurographic art. And then, So with traditional neurographica, you're not trying to make any kind of pattern or shapes, designs, it's, it's random. With art, you can do whatever you'd like. So in this case, I decided that I was going to have sharp hearts show up. So I started with the shape of a heart and then I connected everything. <clears throat> and anytime there was an a connection with the rounding. So that is it. So thank you for coming to Create a Thon. We appreciate it. And I hope that you're able to donate. And you can look up information on traditional neurographica online or if you're just interested in the design aspects, look up neurographic art. And thank you for atten attending today. Hope you enjoyed it.